God is good. Good to see every single person here this evening. It is a fabulous day to be alive today. Amen. Also, uh, so good to see some uh, guests tonight, uh, people who drove all the way from Walla, others who, who came from Sunnyside. So let's give the Lord a round of applause for their life. Yes, uh, we are very happy to see everyone. Our church is becoming, it's no longer just a local church, it's a movement and a lot of other people are uh, being blessed by it every single week and so we are very, very happy for that. So we just have a few more weeks left until our anniversary conference. And so we are so excited for that. Uh, there's some awesome things that are planned for that. So November 20th to 22nd, it's just going to be, you have to take those days off and really, really be here. This Sunday is our prayer line. So we pray for people who have uh, demonic attacks in their life, people who are in need of physical healing and who need uh, that prayer. So we challenge every person to come for that. Starting today, all of you who have children, that can go to nursery uh, we will have two people assigned every single service adults responsible adults and you're welcome to volunteer who will be helping with a nursery so before our nursery was more of like uh, just a social everybody kind of comes in there we really want to make it very specific and very oriented just for those kids and for people to help out so you're welcome to help with that and so that parents can sit and get freedom for their from their kids for two hours <laughs> For the glory of Jesus. Amen. Or you can volunteer and get more kids on your plate. Um, so offering is collected. I'm going to just share with you four steps of our vision. It's very simple. Just four words. You can write them down. Remember them. It's better to memorize them than just write them down. But it helps to write them down. Let's put the first one up. We call it the ladder of success. First is win. When we win somebody to the Lord. Next Wednesday is our miracle catch. So what happens in our church once a month we try to bring one person to church. Invite one person who still doesn't know about Jesus or maybe fallen away from the church. Every single person God loves and not only God loves He wants to bless them. He wants to love on them. He has nobody He wants to punish but the devil. He wants to forgive people and many people see church as a police station. And you know when you're in trouble you don't want to go to the police station. Church is not a police station, it's a hospital where people who are hurting they are welcome. Amen. And so for us we invite people every single week but next Wednesday is going to be a special Wednesday where we encourage every person to win somebody. Maybe you're here today and you have been won to the Lord. It means you have made a decision to follow Jesus. I want to tell you what's next. The second step is consolidate. Consolidate is when the person gives their life to Jesus and they get connected to the church. Usually we do it very simply. The next day or two days later we meet with the person individually. We try to invite them to home group. We try to connect with them and we encourage them to take a next step and that is to get baptized and that they could begin to begin the relationship with God. Now starting this Friday at 8 p.m. for the next five weeks we are going to have these foundational classes. Foundational, it will give people just the basics of what it means to serve Christ. What does it mean to forgive? What does it mean how to read the Bible and all of these things. If you're one of those people today who you saying, you know what, this Christianity is, is still very new for me and I want to get to know more. I'm going to ask you and implore you, beseech you, according to Romans chapter 12 verse 1 in King James Version, <laughs> beseech you, some of you will need to google what that means. I will ask you kindly and nicely to make time to learn more about your faith. To get the foundational understanding Friday 8 o'clock. You already gave your life to Jesus. That means that that party that you used to go to, you have nothing to do on Friday night. There's no exciting movies coming out this weekend anyway and stuff. So you are coming at 8 o'clock for 45 minutes. You're going to hear about that. You're going to also have some discussion and other things and then have a break and then stay for a night prayer and reach your city for the Lord. So another thing is if you haven't been water baptized, if you're saying, you know Vlad, I gotten saved but I haven't been water baptized. I would challenge you to also come on Friday. At the same time we will have a class about baptism so that next Wednesday you can be water baptized. When you give your life to Jesus the next step is water baptism. The scripture teaches us it's a symbolic of dying to ourselves and rising up toward new life. Step number three is we disciple. We win somebody to the Lord, we consolidate and we disciple them. Discipleship is when we mentor them. A lot of people cannot be discipled until they're first delivered. A lot of people have demons, people have curses, people have certain problems that are not 
from God that they are not just normal they don't need just the therapy and counseling they need deliverance what we start discipleship with is we tell people that they need to go through prayer line if you have certain addictions you need to come through prayer line if you have certain uh, problems in your life that you cannot deal with you need to come through prayer line but not only that you need to be taught how to be a disciple and to do discipling on Friday at the same time this is amazing we are going to have a mentorship school it's going to be only five weeks and it's going to be separate from from the foundation school where you're going to learn it's going to focus only on mentorship there's going to be no other topics involved and so those of you who are saying Vlad I've been coming to church I've gotten baptized I uh, I went through prayer line numerous times and you keep telling about mentoring other people I don't know where to start I don't know where to talk to them about this Friday is where you have to be and you maybe say I know a lot about Christianity but I'm not mentoring anybody I'm not helping anybody I'm too busy and everything Friday eight o'clock is where you have to be because we will deal with how to begin to mentor somebody what if they don't change what if this and that and that we're going to deal with practical aspects only on the issue of mentorship our home group leaders will also be on this most of our home group leaders will be in this class and we will challenge every person to be here for that and number four when you get discipled you get sent to start your own home group now we are a church that believes in home groups one of the reasons because we don't want people to be just in the crowd we want people to receive individual attention we want them to reach their potential we don't want people to come to church and nobody knows your name and nobody knows whether you were here or not and some churches it's like that and you're like I like it like that that's not good for you I haven't been coming there for months or you've been coming there for years and they don't even know that you belong there that's not good for you and our church is only getting bigger but we want to make it smaller means every person has their group that they go to where people know you people know your issues or people know your successes we rejoice with you we pray through with you you start your home group and so I'm really 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 excited for this kind of a vision that God has given to us now I understand you may say Vlad I heard you guys have morning prayers we do Monday to Friday doors are open at five Friday evening prayers nine the classes at eight Sunday morning church at 10 home group on Tuesday then you started another home group called close home group for those who already have a home group on Thursday I don't have time for this I'm glad you asked I will address the issue of time number one if you don't have time why in the world did you get a dog I see a lot of people getting dogs it's, it's popular now to get a dog <laughs> and I was talking to some uh, people today and I'm like you're busy and this is not rebuking this is just me talking to you full-time job school responsibilities no time for church no time to read the bible yet you went and paid few hundred bucks to get a puppy who you know requires as much of your attention as a newborn child because every day the snapchats is about that puppy you take walks for that puppy you're like I can't afford to tithe but you got a puppy and you gotta buy food for that puppy but you can't tithe so somehow our priorities are shifted there is nothing wrong please understand with getting a puppy get I mean if God calls you like Andre talked about being saving and you rescuing puppies that is awesome it's where we start but then we start rescuing people but please do not use that excuse I don't have time for God but somehow I have a tough time for a puppy somebody say ouch you know another thing that many times when I see that I there's a lot of times I have to do certain things with people meet with people and and do all of these things and it conflicts with my personal free time and part of me asks the same question that you ask in the back of your mind I always ask myself this question there are people in other nations and I've been to some of those countries where people sit on the streets and don't do nothing for days because they have nothing to do I think of them and I remind myself I am a blessed man that I'm a busy man being busy is a compliment if that doesn't work I use another thing I said there are people on the wheelchairs people bedridden people who are facing six to eight months of life they wished to have a life where they can serve other people 
Vlad, use your life wisely. If that doesn't work, I go further. I begin to remember the times where I wasted my life because I was too stingy to give it to God. And I'm like, and I wasted it gladly. <laughs> I didn't know I was wasting it with joy. Nights upon nights. You know, whether it's a movie marathon or trying to catch up with the Arrow or 24 or some other things or some of you maybe you found there's blacklist that exists and you're like oh my goodness third season 24 episodes great three days in a row you don't sleep you don't you're like a zombie walking around told your teacher you're sick told your parents you got a fever but in reality you locked the room and catching up and blacklist that is a waste of time but see when you're doing that you know it's a waste of time but you're still sacrificing that somehow think of those times when you think of that is sacrificing to serve God think of other people who wasted their life on drugs or maybe you have in the past let that push you and remind you to give your life to the Lord more when that doesn't work for me I always go to this part is that God was here in the beginning before there was earth schedules iphones coffee colleges families children god was here and god will be at the end when they will have my funeral and they will bring me to the church see i couldn't didn't want to go to church they'll bring me to the church but it will be too late some people only go to the church three times when they are hatched matched and dispatched hatched they're born matched they're married and third time is dispatched when they're dead and you will be brought to church that you will be leaving this earth and God will still be there so it is worth to give your time to someone your pet will not be eternal I know you think he will last forever no you will and God will always remember that if that doesn't work for me I have one more thing that I go to and I'm using this very practically. That's what I motivate myself with. Because I don't want to do service to God out of obligation. I want to do it out of passion. And I'm just like you. I look at my schedule and I sometimes look at other people's problems like, you know what? I'd rather just sit at home and do nothing. Instead of meeting with that or doing that or waking up at 4.30 in the morning to come to church to pray. I mean, why do that? Other people don't do that. I could just be like other people. But I don't want to be like other people. I want to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. So the last thing that usually works for me is I remember what Jesus had to go through to save me and I didn't even have anything to offer to him in return yet he did that. He didn't just sacrifice and every morning he woke up and prayed to the Father for me. No, he became a man, came on this earth, lived, learned to walk, learned to talk at the age of 30, submitted his life completely to God. At the age of 33, got crucified and his life ended, didn't build a house didn't marry, didn't get a children, didn't you know have his own favorite pet, didn't have his physical dreams come to pass, sacrifice all of that for what? Because I was deep in my sin showing him a middle finger and saying get off of my way God I don't want to do nothing with you so he can give me a chance to rescue me. If he did that nothing I ever give to God is a sacrifice. God doesn't need your sacrifice. It's you who need God's blessing. If you think somehow God in heaven there is offended because you didn't accept his friend request or because God is lonely, he's not lonely. He's been all good when you didn't even exist. He's going to be fine. You won't be fine without him. All the things I give to God in return, it's not God feeling better. It's my life being better. Make a decision to grow. I'm challenging each person, please. If you don't grow, you're going to backslide. If you've backslidden, continue to grow you may say it's hard it's it's so painful it's it's just another thing no 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 you take that step slowly and you slowly begin to grow further and further and further in God you will see God blessing your life amen let me call up Katrina uh Katrina come over here for a second let's give a can we have find another microphone there's another microphone let's get another microphone it's gonna have uh, two minutes. So Katrina, uh, Katrina, when did you start your home group? When? Yes. Well, I got released in February of this year. Of uh, this year, but okay. it probably took off about three months ago. So in February, Katrina, and how old are you, Katrina? Nineteen. 
Yeah. NIT, okay. Um, so in February, Katrina gets released to start her home group. So she gets, goes through all of that process before she gets sent. She probably went through that process 20 times. <laughs> and then she gets released to start a home group. And how many people did you start with? Zero. <laughs> oh, we, you with started during those times tea. when we... Oh, that's right. When you only had cups, empty cups. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, and so then slowly people start coming. And so was, what happened about three months ago? Um... I started my home group. <laughs> um, I, I reached out to girls that would come here and I would meet with them and we'd meet at my house and it would just take off. Mm -hmm. And you can post a picture of uh, her home group uh, last Sunday um, and stuff. So now, and Katrina uh, posting uh, the best home group ever. I had an awesome, fabulous time and praise God for Snapchats. Now I can yeah. see what, what God is doing in people's lives. And Katrina, I know that this takes time. You meet, I see you're like a super girl with, with girls. You always meet with them. You always hang out with them. And when the new girl comes in, uh, uh, Katrina would like take her and just walk with her everywhere. And so it's kind of like make sure <laughs> nobody attempts to take, you know, and stuff. So how do you see that? Becoming a home group leader, reaching out to other girls. Do you see that as a burden? Do you see that as something uh, difficult and painful? How is it for you? It's the biggest privilege. Um, you watch them grow. You see them from the very beginning. You, you just watch them grow from their confidence level, from not being able to get a job, and then they have a job, and the way they even worship. And it's just incredible. It's so worth it that I encourage you all to go through the mentorship school and become a home group leader. Very encouraging. I am inspired. I want to sign off to the mentorship school. Let's give Katrina a round of applause. And uh, if I can get my buddy Marvin, where is Marvin? Marvin, oh, apostle, apostle of faith, amen. And Marvin, when did you come to our church? Like the very first time? Not, not the, uh, uh, Harry the wise man, but after uh, Harry the wise man. Um, it was a week before Easter. This year? This year, yeah. Oh, so this year? Yeah, this year. Uh-huh, okay, so uh, Easter is which month? Uh, I don't know. April, April it is. So Marvin, so you come, you, you give your life to the Lord, you dedicate, put, put the four steps again. So kind of, that's going to happen with you. Four steps, four steps. Not this, for a second. So four steps, so you come, and that's going to happen with you. You get, you give your life to the Lord, then uh, I'm assuming Martin or somebody start meeting with you. Yeah. Cons consolidating you. Yeah. Was it Martin? That was yeah, it was that? Martin. Um, every here and there, he'll just called me up, um, said that he wants to meet with me uh -huh. and just see how my life is going, how things are going with me, if I've been mentored about the word. And I didn't really know much, so he took me in and started teaching me more. Mm -hmm. And so you, uh, you got baptized? Yeah. Uh -huh. You got baptized. And then you start going to Martin's home group? That's correct. That's correct. And so did you go to the prayer line? Yes, I did. <laughs> this, bro, <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> That's how you start a home group. You went through prayer line, eh, backsliding still. Go again, prayer line, that's it. No, as funny as it sounds, but it's actually true. And so you get, and then you, you went through probably a few school of leaders and then you, uh, you got disciple with Martin. And so you got released actually this week was your first time you had a home group. Um, actually, I got released like a month or two ago. Martin told me. Secretly. Like, huh? Yeah, secretly. He told me, he's like, Sneaky I want you to stuff. open your own home group, you know, and starting the fuck. Like two months ago, he told me, next week, you're not coming to mine. You're going to do yours at your own house. And well, I was excited, and I, told, I texted my friends to come, and no one showed up. <laughs> okay, what'd you do? And so Martin took me back in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for the home group leaders who just take back in. You fail, come back. Come back home. Katrina didn't have that privilege. <laughs> she was left with those teacups, drinking all of that tea by herself. <laughs> Uh -huh. So, and then he released you again. Yeah, just last week, um, two weeks ago, he told me, he's like, oh, you're going to release your own home group. And I'm not going to lie, I was nervous again because I was going to invite the same people. <laughs> and I was like, man, probably like one or two, like two or three people out of those 10 people that I've invited are coming to church. So, I mean, maybe those two will show up or maybe they won't. But before, you know, I wouldn't pray as much about that for my home group. And how Martin always told me that when you pray, you have faith and you vision stuff then it, uh, you see it with yourself, you know, it happens. Mm -hmm. And so um, I prayed constantly about this home group, and I finally got released just last week. And every single person that I invited came by, which I was surprised because it was actually all 10. Wow. 
first time, first time I saw this, I'm like, if I wouldn't be a Christian, I would see some kind of drug deal is going on here. <laughs> Marvin is a, is, a do, is a hope dealer, not do, a do, hope dealer. So you can see literally, I mean, this is, this is what's up. On the street, right there, cold, everybody bow their heads, close their eyes, sinner's prayer. And so, no, that is so awesome. How do you feel, Marvin? Um, I actually feel great because there's a couple of people within that home group that have gone the same path that I have. Mm -hmm. And then they're seeing the change in me. And some privately, they actually tell me, you know, like, I'm seeing happiness within you. I'm seeing your life expand. I'm seeing you grow more. And I honestly want to, I want the same to happen to my life. Mm -hmm. And so I'm blessed to be placed in these, into these people's life. Yes, I'm glad, you know, I get placed to people to mentor me, to great people. But I'm more privileged and I'm more happy that God places me to those that are lost. Mm -hmm. Because then I get to teach them the way. I get to show them and mm -hmm. allow God to use me as a light into their life to show them that what I've been through mm -hmm. and got broken, that the same can happen to them as well. That's good, that's good, that's good. Let's give a round of applause for Marvin. God bless you. Thank you, Marvin. You take your seat. Uh, there, was, there was, I think, about four or, or four more people that were released this week as well. And uh, most of them are here right now. We, uh, for the sake of time, we are going to uh, have them share their stories a little bit later and stuff. So, but we just give God the glory. Amen. I think as of next week, we're going to have about 32 home, 30, 34 home groups. Uh, in our church and stuff so it's, it's like all the glory goes to Jesus and I believe that next year before our conference we're going to have 50 home groups it's not just about the number but it's about leaders being raised up we're not just wanting to raise up bench warmers we want to raise up world changers for the glory of God can somebody say amen let's put our hands together one more time for the Lord Jesus Christ amen amen and AJ actually just left his work just so he could, come come over here AJ just for a minute because he's working tonight, but he's like, I'll just make it, make it. AJ also started his home group last weekend. Yeah. AJ, tell us in a nutshell, you came here, and I remember you were talking about how, uh, you know, you kind of went to church before, but you were always in the background, not really utilized, and uh, how'd you feel about that? Oh, um, I feel a bit like, uh, what's the word, what's the word? Just uh, useless, kind of, uh -huh. like... I was always there, I was always ready to serve God in the church, but like they would always just give me the cold shoulder, just like they wouldn't acknowledge me and what I was, what I wanted to do for the church. So I was like, why am I here? Why am mm -hmm. I even coming here? And then you came here, and you're like, these people they just don't want to like force me to do everything. <laughs> <laughs> you forced me to do everything. The other extreme. So you, you started your home, you kind of had the desire, you're working with, with guys all the time and stuff. And so how did it go this Saturday? And uh, tell us a little bit about it. Oh, it was good. I uh, invited um, one, two, three of the guys and they all came. Three out of three? Yeah. Should yeah, have so invited I... 30. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, I'm working too. Okay. Yeah, so um, there, there were three guys I went to high school with and then, um, uh, what's it called? I, um, I did the message with Martin. Because they were, they were, um, they're new to church, so I didn't want to just doubt, give them the word like, you need to do this with the Holy Spirit, you need to do this and this, you know, so mm -hmm. you receive a new level. So I was like, no, no, no. I don't want to go too deep. Let me give them like a, a confidence booster at first. <laughs> so um, just talk about like choices and how mm -hmm. success is a choice too as mm -hmm. well as, as, mm -hmm. well as a failure. Mm -hmm. And then um, it went really good and then they got You know close. what I love about our home groups now is that a lot of people that come to our home groups have never been to our church. And a lot of people who come to our home groups don't necessarily come to our church but they eventually begin to come to our church so our home groups is not just to get people from the church to go to a home group it's also invite people who never would come to church to come hang out to hear about the message encouragement fellowship and then they eventually come to church aj we we're proud of you god bless you keep boxing for jesus amen amen i think uh, we've got encouraged be blessed in jesus name